tongues of fire. God promises, even in Matthew, it's in the bulletin, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. But the Holy Ghost and fire are one and the same person. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get me through this. If you have your Bibles, turn to Acts, the second chapter. It's so important that you realize that everything that's happening now was already written. And the day of Pentecost was already written in Joel, the second chapter. So when I was studying this, there are no suddenlies in God's kingdom. There's suddenlies for us. Because with God, He wrote something before the whole world was created, what was going to transpire at the perfect time. Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a place for every event unto heaven. Amen? In Acts, the second chapter, 1 through 4, and then 12 to 13, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and filled the whole house where they were, sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues. And as the Spirit gave them utterance, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. And you know what? They were full of new wine. The new wine is the gospel, the Holy Ghost, the living word, come to live in who you are, the temple of God. See, they didn't even know they were prophesying the truth. They were mocking something that was the truth. They did have the new wine. It's the Holy Spirit that knows every language. They spoke to so many different people of all languages, and each one of them spoke to different languages to hear the great works of God. It's so amazing that if we really tapped into the Holy Spirit and who He is, you would never have to worry about what you're going to say ever again. doesn't even matter if you're in another country. He'll give you the language. Amen. But know something in God's kingdom, there's no suddenly there's a time and a place for every event under heaven. Even the revival that's breaking out on these college campuses, God knew before the end, before he created everything, what time it would take and when it would manifest. What's a real blessing? The big names aren't allowed there. Amen. It's just all the kids doing the preaching and humble servants. The big name pastors aren't even allowed to go there. The big name evangelists better not even show up. Would you say, Kenny, they chased them away? Because <laughs> the only name that's important Jesus. is the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name that can save us. There is no other name that's manifested above every other name but the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So important today that you see you're the temple of that those tongues of fire that came down. That's what's in you. You have a fire in you. The problem is we don't let it burn. Because it has to burn out what's all of you. So what's left is a fire. And you'll see today that you're supposed to be fire breathers. Yeah. When you speak the word of God, it's a fire. It consumes everything in its path. But the word of God is to be used against darkness, not against the people in darkness. You attack what has people. You don't attack people. So when you breathe in the word of God, which is a fire, you breathe it against the darkness. Like we pray for the occults all the time in this town to get saved. We bind up their tongues. We curse the demons of, of witchcraft and sorcery and black magic in the occult. We come against all the demonic forces that have a hold of people. Amen? Amen. So it's so important today that when you see today that you have a fire in you, but you to use it for God's glory, not for vengeance. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews 12. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verses 28-29. Therefore, since we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. See, you've got to quit separating God out. 
Like Terry said before, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one. That's 1 John 5, 7. The fire of God is who He is. Remember, God's a spirit. It's a spiritual fire. Amen? So it's so important today that you see something. You receive the fire of God when you get saved and you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. It is so important that you see today you're to use that fire for good and not for evil. The fire in you tears down the evil. It melts your enemies. Revelation 20, uh, verses 7 to 10, verse 9. If people ever realized how hot a fire you have in you. Mm, Jesus. Now, when, you're going to have enemies all the days of your life. They hate God. They hate country. They hate family. We have a government that has no fear of God. But there's going to come a day when the fire is going to consume them. Not you. Amen. So be careful with your tongue. Be careful with your tongue. Because there's so much power in your tongue. You have the power to take life or to give life. John 6, 63. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. That's what Jesus said. We speak life. We speak healing. We speak the fire on the darkness. Not on the people in it. Amen. Revelation 20, verse 9. Then they went up on the breath of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. That's us. And, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Hebrews 10, 30. Hebrews 10, 30. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Too many people pray against people and not the darkness. Vengeance is never our job. Never. Nowhere in the Bible does God tell you to go out and take vengeance. We're not entitled to it. We all get hurt. We all get wounded. Everybody does. But you remember something when you're praying. You do not pray against the person, but you pray against the demons that have them. Because your tongue can destroy that person's life. God will honor your words. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life from the power of your tongue. So when you speak, and you speak against people, you're speaking against the guy who made them. Everybody on this earth is made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. Some choose to serve the devil, some choose not to. It's a personal choice. God doesn't make you. But there's a day coming that's surrounding the church in this country that's trying to take down the cross. Good luck with that. This is God's nation, one nation under God. And he doesn't give up what's his. We belong to him. So when your enemies are surrounding you, don't worry about them. The fire is coming for them, not from you. Remember something, if you realize the power that's in your tongue today, and that's consuming fire that God is, you receive a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. So be careful what you speak from now on. Stop getting so mad at people. They're not your enemy, the devil is. And I checked this morning. He took care of it already. It's finished. He defeated the devil. So learn to speak properly. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, 2 Peter, 3rd chapter. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verses 10 to 13. When I talk about how much of a fire God is, and you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, this is what's in you. This is what is actually inside of us. And we don't, we don't allow it to burn us up. See, the fire in you is to burn you up. So what's left is a holy fire. Not you. Amen? Amen? <laughs> when we talk about the refining process, people get uncomfortable. 2 <laughs> Peter 3, 10 to 13. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up, O oh, Jesus. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for the facing of the coming of the day of God, 
because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, who Jesus, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Revelation 19, 12, when he comes back, he's going to have eyes of fire and a sword in his mouth. That's his wrath. He came as a lamb. He's coming as king next time. And he's going to burn up everything that's not of him. Everybody and everything that's not of God will be burned up in fire. That's the power of the fire that's in all of you. We got quiet this morning. So now when you speak the word of God, it has fire power to it. Fire power. <clears throat> Like I said, if we really learned how to pray God's word against the enemy, against his devices, against what he raises up against the church, it would melt all the enemy. Not the people, but the demons that have them. I'm telling you, you have that much power inside of you. When you breathe God's word out, it will burn up everything around you. That's not of God. Like I said, if we learn to pray against the darkness and not against people, there would be a whole new church. Those kids in those college campuses back in Kentucky and Tennessee, you know what they're there for? Jesus. The presence of God is so strong, they're weeping, they're repentant. You know what it came from? Repentance. Repentance. Church needs to repent. Because you see, in the innocence of these kids, they're going because the presence of God is so strong. The one man started to preach, and all these kids started coming up front, getting on the knees crying. He says, well, I'm not preaching today. The presence of God took them over. What a blessing. What a blessing. You know why? Because those kids were humble. There was a tangible presence of Almighty God that fell upon them. And the guy couldn't even preach. They all came up to the altar, started getting saved, started getting healed, weeping in godly sorrow, turning from the ways of darkness to turn to walk in the light. Look at the God we serve. Like I said, no one's going to stop this revival. Because this is the last one. When this is over, he comes back. That was prophesied in Azusa Street. There'd be one last revival. And then he'd return. Nobody knows how long that is, but let me tell you that. Amen. But today, church, let us be a people that lets this fire consume us. People are afraid of the fire. The only thing God's going to burn out of you is what hinders your intimacy with him. There's no other relationship you should be focused on but his first. But to do that, you have to be burned up. So you're not looking to anybody else for your peace, for your joy, why you're here. We're here to bring God glory, amen. Isaiah 43, 7. It's the only reason he made you. But to have that communion with God, what's of us must be burned up. If there's any self-centeredness in your heart, you're not going to breathe fire. I'll show you that in a minute. So important, church. Jeremiah 23. Oh, Jesus. Verses 28-29. Got to remember something about Jeremiah. <clears throat> he was hated from the day he started his prophetic call. His own people hated him because he brought correction. You know, his whole lifetime, they never listened to one word he said. They never changed. They never changed. It's amazing the warnings he gave them, but they hated him because he warned them. It's like our government. They've been warned by God and they don't listen, so they were brought to their knees. This is God's country. It'll stay that way. Jeremiah 23, 28 to 29. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. He who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks it in pieces. It breaks the rock in pieces. This thing, when you speak it, when you speak this word, it is so powerful. It comes like a hammer, and it crushes everything. It's like a fire. Because when you speak his word, you speak in his very life. And his authority and his dominion. 
So when you speak this word in your circumstances, I don't care if it's spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial, when you speak this word, it's going to destroy what's ever holding back what God has for you. Think about that kind of power. This written word is what spoke the universe into existence. God spoke and it was. God said, let there be light. There was light. That's how much power is in you. Do you realize that today? He gave you the authority to speak his word and he'll back it up. It's amazing how we don't realize the dominion and authority we've been given when Christ ascended on high to the right hand of majesty. This is in you. Every word is living inside of you. And when you speak his word, the fire and the power of the hammer of God's word is going to come out of your mouth. We really need to learn how to speak his word, but do it from, from his heart, not yours. Amen. Because I'm going to show you why in a minute. It is so important today, church. It is so very important that you take his word, you cherish his word, and you let his word change you. Because let me tell you something, if you use this word as a weapon against people and not against the devil, it's going to turn on you. I got quiet. You got quiet. This is a weapon that defeated the devil. Not people. Never people, church. And if you use this against people, I can tell you God's already told me, it's going to come, get, come for you. You do not have a right to use this against people. You have a right to speak this over somebody's life that the Word of God can make them and bring them to salvation, deliverance, healing, setting the captives free. Do not use this as a weapon against people, ever. Because if you do, it's going to come for you. You got quiet. That's how serious God takes this. He showed all of us what? Mercy, compassion. John said it today. He went to the cross freely. He bowed his head and got nailed to a cross and said, Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Psalm 86, 11. So important today. These two verses I'm going to share with you. Let them enter your heart today. <clears throat> Because if you do not, and you don't fear him in the right way, then we fear him with all reverence. Not like in the old covenant where they trembled before him. We fear him with an awe and reverential respect of the holy God that he is. In Psalm 86, 11, it says, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Holy cow. So you'll abuse the word of God if your heart doesn't fear his name. Because the name and the word are one and the same. I'm telling you, church, it's so important today. When he told me this the other day, a couple days ago, he said, my church doesn't fear my name anymore. Can you imagine that? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Our hearts must fear his name, but in the right kind of fear. Or reverence of a holy God that gave up his life for ours who paid a price we couldn't pay so important today that we allow God's fear to fill our heart in the right way too many people tremble before God and they shouldn't be because God is love it's right there on the wall he's moved by compassion he wants us to be in such awe of his greatness and of his holiness and of his power and let me tell you something, unless your heart fears his name, you will not speak with authority. You will not speak in the firepower of God's word. Like in your war movies, they shoot the cannons and the flames come out. <laughs> Think about it. Watch some of the stuff on military shows where they got those massive cannons. And when they shoot that rocket out, flames come out with it. That's the power of God's word. <clears throat> when it leaves your tongue. When it leaves your tongue, it comes out like a missile. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 4. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 11 to 13, just verse 12. 
For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of your heart. And what I said about uniting your heart to fear his name, you can't fool God. He lives in your heart. So when I say today, your words have power, your words have fire in them. Let me tell you something, you can't fool him. God knows your thoughts of your heart before you speak a word. That should make us more careful what we say. It really should. Because if he knows the thoughts and the intent of your heart, and then you pick this book up and you go to try and speak fire and speak power, but your heart, the motive of your heart is evil, it's never going to happen. You're going to destroy yourself, not anybody else. You'll never get results. You can't get results if your heart's not right. You cannot and will not. God will never honor an ungodly heart and ungodly thoughts. That would mean he would be approving of sin. Because ungodly thoughts and ungodly and ungodly motives are sin before God. Because if you have them, they're going to lead to sin. Amen. Thank you, church. <clears throat> Help me, Lord. Let him get that seat. If you ever realized inside of you is the fullness of God, and that fullness is a fire, it's a spiritual fire. What they got baptized in in the day of Pentecost is what you got baptized in when you got the Holy Spirit. And when that Holy Spirit fell on you, all that God is, His fire, His power, His authority, dominion, got placed inside of you. So if you really know what's in there, you'll allow it to live, not you. Every one of us is supposed to be crucified vessels. It's no longer us who live, but he who lives in us. But we have to allow that fire to burn out every ungodly motive, every ungodly desire that's in us, so that what comes out of our mouth is the pure power of God's living word. Because it can't be about us. That's what's beautiful about this revival. It's all about Jesus. They're not talking about anything other than Jesus. These kids are being transformed. They're going to go out and change this country. You watch. Nothing's going to stop what God's doing. Remember something. When God has begun, nothing can reverse this. We are in such a blessed time and age in the history of humanity to see a move of God like they've never seen. It's going to be greater than the book of Acts. Because we have to reach billions and billions of souls with the good news. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Jeremiah 20. Just verses 9 and 10. Here's Jeremiah again. Remember something. He was persecuted by his own people. And he wasn't happy about his calling. <laughs> Sometimes I question my calling. But I don't say much because I know what I'm called to. Amen? So you ride out the storm like Jeremiah did. He was faithful to the end. <clears throat> In Jeremiah 20 verses 9 and 10. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. <laughs> but his word was in my heart like a burning fire. <sighs> Shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. For I heard many mocking, fear on every side. Report, they say, we were reported. All my acquaintances, watch this, watched for my stumbling, saying, perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. Nice people. Nice people. So when you are, are out ministering, you're out witnessing for Christ, people around you aren't going to like it. They're going to look for you to fall. They're going to look for you to stumble. People pray for you to stumble. Because they don't want you walking with Jesus. And I'm not talking the unsaved. I'm talking the saved. I got more persecution from the church than I don't do from heathen. Yeah, it's true. I get more persecution from Christians since I've been saved than I get from those outside the church. When I'm out laying hands on the sick for people in stores and prophesying and laying hands on people and witnessing, the heathen are interested. <coughs> Who is this guy? Praying in tongues, laying hands on people, anointing them in the stores. And they're like, but Christians are like, who do you think you are? 
I'm a son of God. You're sons and daughters of God. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation of believers. So people aren't going to like you when you're bold in your faith, you're out witnessing for Christ. Expect that because he, he had them all around him. But he was, he was so persecuted, he wanted to just not talk about God, but he couldn't. You know why? Because God put that word, which is a fire in his heart. It's in here. I've said what he said to people. I'm not going to talk about you anymore. Lasted about three minutes. <laughs> when I was younger in the Lord and didn't know any better, and I started going through a lot of trials, I didn't understand it. I quit. I'm not speaking anymore. One of my mentors called me and said, read Jeremiah 20, verse 9. He knew what I was... The Holy Spirit told him to call me because I just got done saying I'm not going to speak about you anymore. I pick up the phone. Yeah, Daniel. He said, read Jeremiah 20, verse 9. And I just wept. The phone rang two minutes later with somebody else. I prayed with them for an hour on the phone. So, so much for not talking about God. You know why? Because so much of this word is in my heart. It has to come out. Never hold back the gifting God's gave you. And that's sharing the good news, the word of God with people. Don't even try and hold it back. If people don't like you, they're just getting convicted. Mm -hmm. And if other Christians don't like you, they're just jealous. Because you're out doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's all it is. Well, that's not my calling. Yes, it is. All of you are called to the Great Commission. Go out to the ends of the earth and make disciples of all nations. Every one of us has the same calling. Mine's no different than all of yours. There may be different offices in the ministry, but all of us have the same calling to go out and take that word to people which can save them. Everybody has the same calling. Don't sit there and go, well, that's somebody else's job. They're a preacher. No, so are you. The Bible says you all will be witnesses for my, and of my word. He doesn't ask you to be a witness. He says you will be. If you're a Christian, you are a witness. You are a minister of the gospel. And you don't need anything else but the blood of Jesus that bought your soul, saved you, filled you with the Holy Ghost. And now you're empowered to go out and share the good news. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> when I say your friends around you, people around you that don't like you because you're a witness for Christ, First Peter, fourth chapter. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verses 4 and 5. Bless you, Jesus. In regard to these things, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of precipitation, <coughs> speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Like I said, sometimes you've got to let people go from your life because you're a witness for Christ. You find out who your real friends are when you're out sharing the gospel. They want you to go back to the old ways. When I got delivered and born again, I didn't go back to the bars. I didn't go back to partying. I actually started to sleep at night <laughs> and not stay up all night. I actually had a clear conscience for the first time in 37 years when I got born again. I didn't go hang out with my old friends because none of them were my friends. I was finally happy. I finally had peace. I finally had joy. They couldn't understand why I wouldn't go back. I was so bad they were taking bets when I'd go back to my old way of living. That was June of me, 32 years. I'm not going back. I'm a new creation of God in Christ, and so all of you. There is no past in your life. If you're looking at what you used to do, and you're missing that, you never got born again. There's no such thing as good old days before Christ Jesus. Not one of us had a good day before Jesus. Not one of us. It was pure darkness. And you want death row heading to hell. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Psalm 104. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 
verses 1 to 4. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who covers yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers, that's all of us, a flame of fire. A flame of what? Fire. <clears throat> when I was meditating on this last night, Psalm 103, 20, His angels who excel in strength will obey and perform His word. So when you are speaking the word of God, which is a hammer and a fire, His angels take the words from your lips to go do what they were sent to do. They take your words and they go perform them. Now, look at the authority you have to pray God's word. Doesn't matter how far away a person is. If you're praying for them, when it leaves your lips, the angels take it and they deliver it. That's the authority we have as believers. Yeah? Power. Think about it. This angel's standing in here right now. They're all over the place. We got a 35 footer stands right outside the wall right there. Been here for over 13 years. He doesn't move. <coughs> he doesn't move. The glory's in here all the time. Eyes on fire again. Voice may not be well, but the anointing is. <laughs> Amen. Like I said, we're in a day and age until you learn what your tongue can do, the good it can do, the damage it can do against Satan and his kingdom who's already been defeated. Don't expect to use that word as a spiritual weapon until your heart has been purified and it fears God's name. Because he's not going to trust you with that authority if your motives are revenge, anger, bitterness, or anything else towards a person. God will never honor that. We do not have the right before a holy God not to forgive people that have hurt us. You don't have the right to. You must forgive or you're not forgiven. God couldn't make it any clearer when he says that. If you forgive others, my Father in heaven will also forgive you if you do not. You will not be forgiven. That should put fear into any born-again believer. Because forgiveness is everything, church. Every one of you saints is forgiven. God doesn't keep a record of sin. He can't. Because He looks at you through the blood of the cross. Your past, your present, and even any future sins you commit are already paid for. They're paid for. He paid for sins once. He's not going to come again and do it. Next time He comes, He's coming for the church. Amen? Amen. Daniel, the third chapter, when I talk about fire. Verses 24 and 25, everybody knows this story. Nebuchadnezzar built himself a 50-foot statue, wanted everybody to bow down and worship, and they went, no. No, we won't. This world wants you to worship a government. It wants you to worship people. He wants you idolizing um, actors, actresses, um, music stars, all these other people. I'm sorry, they're not qualified. We did that whole teaching in here. He stands alone. His name stands alone. And is worthy of praise and honor and glory. There's no one else. There's one name. Only one worthy of praise. Don't ever praise people. Edify, build people. You don't praise them. Don't you dare. Nobody can live up to that. <laughs> but Daniel, the third chapter, watch what happens. If they throw him into the fire, they made the fire so hot, the guys that threw the three kids in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they melted. That's a hot fire. But guess what? Jesus was in the fire, because he is the fire. Mm -hmm. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose in haste and spoke, saying to the counselors, did we not cast three men into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king, look. He answered, I see four men, loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. 
and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. They came out of that, didn't smell like smoke. Their clothes weren't even burnt. Think about walking through a furnace today, and you walk right through it, and you come out on the other side, and your clothes aren't even smoking. They get quiet. That's the fire that's in you. Isaiah 43, 2, though you walk through the rivers, they will not overflow you. Though you walk through the fire, it will not burn you or scorch you. It says when you. See, you're going to walk through the rivers. You're going to walk through the fires. But they're not going to overflow you, and they're not going to burn you. What they're going to burn is what's left of you. So what's left is a Holy Ghost fire. Amen. To go out and do the greater works of God and glorify God. We say and do. Amen. Yes. Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> there was going to be a lot more today, but there's not. Because my voice is about run out. <clears throat> like I said, next time God tells you to rest, rest. <laughs> This is what happens when you put too much on your back and you don't learn to sleep. But God is faithful. But you must realize something today. You are an earthly vessel. A vessel filled with fire. When used for the glory of God, you'll walk through this earth and nothing can touch you. Because His fire will burn with men when they left Israel. That wall of fire couldn't touch His children. They can't touch you. Because you're filled with the fire. And you're firing, you will go deal with your enemies. Stop looking at enemies. Start looking at the one that already conquered them. Yeah. You only have one enemy. The enemy of your soul. And it's Satan. And he's been defeated. He's beneath you. He's not above you. He's not even your equal. When you know that he's already lost the battle. If we ever realize we're dealing with an enemy that's defeated, you wouldn't let him in the door. Amen? So, just you need to ask God today to clean your heart out. But what I shared with you today will never happen. He told me that. He said, so many of my children have so much power, they don't walk in it because their hearts aren't right. They want it for themselves and not for His glory. We're not here for us. We're never going to be here for us. You know why that's happening on those college campuses? Because they're there for Jesus. They're there for Jesus. That I've been weeping over that for so long. When this thing started, I've been crying all week. I said, God, look at this. He said, I told you 31 years. See, he told me 31 years ago this was coming. I wasn't waiting. We were being prepared for a day such as this. So know that you know what started there is not going to stop. It's going to keep growing. Because God has begun His return. Like I said, this is the beginning of the end. Though not long it is, I think we got plenty of time. Because there's too many children I've anointed that haven't fulfilled their destiny yet. So we got time. Don't be in a hurry, but be about your Father's business. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today for another glorious day. Thank you that you are so merciful, oh God. I thank you, Lord. Next time you tell me to rest, I'll rest, oh God. The devil thinks he won something, but he lost. I thank you for the grace to rest when it's time to rest. I thank you for the strength to always go forward. But there's a time for rest. There's a time for resting in you regenerating my own spirit, getting rewarded myself. That is for everybody in the sound of my voice. When God says rest in him, he wants to reward you, refresh you. You'll be fresh and flourishing, saith the Lord. When you allow my spirit to just come and be with you and refresh you and minister to you. It's not always about praying and interceding. It's about just resting in my arms, saith the Lord. For I am love, I am kindness, I am mercy, I am compassion. 
I am the only one that can sustain you in these last days, saith God. So let my fire burn you up today. Open your hearts to me today. And allow me to take out anything that I have not planted inside your heart. For only the power of my fire can burn out those roots that I didn't plant. Do not resist me this day, saith God. For I love you. I have such great plans for you. Trust me, saith the Lord this day. It is then I will teach you to speak my word with power and authority. And when it leaves your lips, it will come out like a hammer and like fire. And it will produce all my promises in your life, saith the Lord, this day. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for fresh tongues of fire. Some of us get weary when we're down here. But I just thank you that that fire is going to burn out any weariness, any tiredness in our hearts, souls, and minds. Give us that fresh anointing you promised in Joel, the new oil and the new wine to flow through us and in us. Bring healing and wholeness to your church, O oh God. Bring unity to your church, O oh God. But I thank you for raising up a church on fire that loves you, that obeys your voice, and does your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen.